Roman roads, medieval villages, and some very big holes. Today, I'm exploring the village of South Canelli on the outskirts of Porthcore. Here come the titles. Well, hello and welcome. And today, I'm going to go on a little walking tour around the village of South Canelli, which is on the outskirts of Porthcore. It's called South Canelli, but the original name was Jess Canelli. You can find evidence of that name going back to the early 1100s. So where does the name Canelli come from? Some people think it comes from St. Cornelius, and there's a church built in the 12th century in the village, which was dedicated to St. Cornelius. Others think it's from the family name of the Lord of the Manor, De Canelli, and Thomas, son of William, who was one of the landowners, adopted the name De Canelli. But to me, it sounds like the name already existed, and he adopted the name of the area where he governed. So, um, anyway, what do you think? I personally, I think it's uh, St. Cornelius, but you may know otherwise. Pop the comments below. You can't believe as you walk through South Canelli, this road, and it gets narrow over there, used to be the main road into Porthcore. Even after they built the motorway, Junction 37, the traffic had to flow through here. I think it was the 90s they built the South Canelli Bypass. So if you're local, you probably remember the Smoky Cop Bridge, I think it was, just by the Esso station. It was a really sharp bend over the old railway bridge that get into Porthcore, and it was especially bad at night. But anyway, it's much quieter because they've now built the bypass. You do get some traffic through here because it's still an important quarrying area, and more about that later. So in the centre of the town, you've got a little plaque, South Canelli, and it tells you the history. Like I mentioned, Anglo-Norman, uh, 12th century. I mentioned the Lord William and his son Thomas. Apparently, it was nearly called Thomastown after the sun. And according to this, the place was already called Canelli, and they adopted the name De Canelli. They lived in a mansion, which is now where a private house, T-Mine, stands. So, anyway, we're going to head up an old, one of the original roads called Lambro. There's a photograph here of how it used to look, and I'll put that up now so you can have a look. The route is marked. They're not very clear. They're coming off the lamppost, but the walking route is marked, and I'll show you where those are now. They're not very clear, but they're still there. Canelli Walk Route 1. So I'm now walking up that old road you saw in that photograph, which is known as Lamb Row, to start the South Canelli Circular Walk. At the end here used to be a pub, I think, with three horseshoes. I think it's now a private residence. But up here, though, just past the three horseshoes where it used to be, used to be the old railway line. So at the top of Lamb Row, you'll find this information stand and it tells you about the Defranklin V to Porthcall Railway. I mentioned this in the video about Kev Kevin Cribble Ironworks. Um, it used to be a horse-drawn tram and it was built between 1825 and 1829. They used to bring the coal and the iron down to Porthcall Docks. But on the way back, you used to call here to get the limestone to take up to the ironworks. In 1861, it was converted to steam. And in this photograph, I'll put it up now, I think it's from the turn of the century. It was taken from around where uh, Porthcore, South Canelli border near the Esso petrol station. And it's looking up the railway track this way. And there was a little tram road that went up here, where we're walking, that went to the quarries that joined the main line here. So, and that's where we're going, up towards the quarries. So in that old photograph, you probably, we're looking at this area from the other side, and the railway line used to run through here. 
again I think there was a crossing and there was a, a connecting the tram road that used to go up to the quarry to get the limestone from the quarry it used to join along here before it continued up towards the valleys. So as I was filming the old railway the people that live in this house came out and kindly showed me a few photographs which I've copied and I'll put in now and you can see that house with the railway going past. Anyway, onward towards the quarries past Railway Terrace. I've left the main road in South Canelli at Lamro. Now I'm walking alongside what used to be the railway line into Porthcawl. Railway Terrace is over there. Uh, the train ran to the right of that, to Porthcawl. But we're walking up the path to the left to the limestone quarries. They've been mining limestone there for hundreds of years, but it really took off in the Industrial Revolution when they needed limestone for iron. It's still in use today. It's now run by the company Tarmac, and there's quite a big hole up there. <laughs> so that's where we're heading, to the quarries. So as you come out of the trees and it starts to open up a bit, you can see it's a very scarred landscape from the quarrying. I don't know if the mic's picking it up, but you can hear some heavy machinery coming from over there. Although I said this area was a scarred landscape, the parts that are now disused, you can see nature's reclaiming it. Plants are coming back, a lot of wildlife. So this part of the walk is quite interesting. You're like in a, a dark forest. Actually it looks like Jurassic Park over there. But I don't know if you can hear it on the, on the microphone. You can hear quarrying going on over there. Just over there, it's an access road for the lorries. And it's quite noisy. But in the middle is this wilderness. I'm now coming up to the working quarry. Probably can hear the noise in the background. The path itself, so far, the path itself has been well defined. It's actually graveled, so it's not too muddy. It's a bit overgrown in parts because it's the middle of the summer, but straightforward so far. We walk up the path. We're at the entrance to the working quarry, but it's still quite well signposted. And there's some information stands here about the quarry, Pant Marrow, and they say it's been exploited since the Roman period. They use it to make mortar and lime wash. So we have to be careful, we have to cross here, across a working um, industrial road for the quarry for the next part of the path. But it is signposted, and I'll show you. You can see the way marker just across the path there. So that's where we've come from, just across there, just take care over there. It's not too busy, but just take care. And we're continuing here. I think just up here is where the lorries wait to get filled. And I think there's a way station there as well. As you can hear, a lot of work going on.
you know you're on the right path. You go past this porter cabin. Danger, cliff edge, stay away. And the poor person's already lost their hands and feet. The car can go your tape run, the car can go your tape run. KCS go your tape run, KCS, sorry, go your cement rock, go your cement rock, KCS. So we finally come out at a very big hole indeed. That's where we've come from and that's where we're going to go. That is a big hole. I don't know if you can make out the wind turbines. That's the old RAF Stormy Down base over there, where those turbines are. So on this part of the route, you have to take care because there's some heavy vehicles crossing. So we cross from there, past the entrance to the quarry, to here. Don't go up this way. You do a sharp left and there's a marker on a post over there. So I'll show you exactly where I'm standing from an aerial map up there. So we just go through a small gate and we leave the noise and the dust of the quarry behind us and we're in the countryside and we're going to cross this field and come out in a lane called Teal Sheet. It's only a country lane now but years ago it was far more important and that's where we're heading. I'm not that far away from Stormy Down Castle, it's just over there. And remember this area, Stormy Down, uh, it gets its name for the person that built the castle, Geoffrey Sturmey, S-T-U-R-M-I, and not from Stormy as in Stormy Weather. The area was cut right through, but when they built the M4 motorway, and they cut right through the road we're going to next, Heal a Sheet. Like I mentioned earlier, it's now just a country lane, but it was an important route dating back to Roman times. The Romans used it to get across South Wales and right until the medieval period when Kenfig Old Town was occupied, it's now buried by the sand, that was a main route. It went past Kenfig. But obviously when that medieval town was abandoned, it was covered by the sand, the main route was moved back towards Pyle a bit more. But anyway, we're going to heal a sheet and see what we can find there. There's talk of a Roman fort in this area, because obviously the Romans came through. Some think it could have been where Kenfig Castle is now. Uh, obviously that area was important for the Normans, so it would have been useful for the Romans before them. Others think when they built the M4, any remains would have been destroyed. But there have been a few finds around this area. So this is Hiola Sheet. It looks insignificant now, but it was a very important route through South Wales, right up until the medieval period. So we're going to continue down here. Uh, like I said, the M4 cut right through it, but there is a bridge over the M4. And unfortunately, there's black clouds coming. Will I get round before it rains? <laughs> Let's go. So I walked down here a sheet to Teetangvis Farm, and this was the site of a monastic grange which was owned by Margam Abbey. I don't know if you can hear, the M4 was just over that hedge there, and this is where Hiola Sheet was cut right through by the M4 motorway when they built that. So we're going to cross over that and head to the other part of Hiola Sheet 
just over the other side of the motorway. From Heeler Sheep, you come into Teague Tanglis Farm uh, for about 50 yards, and then there's, there's a path that takes you across the M4 motorway on a footbridge. But as you turn off, they've got an information stand here about Heeler Sheep. And as I mentioned, it was important up until the 15th century when Kenfig was abandoned and they built a new road further inland which went through the village of Pyle and this basically was left and it, they also mentioned here how uh, it's believed the Romans used this route as well as a, a way of getting across South Wales from their base in Caleon to West Wales anyway we're going to go across the M4 Let's go. As you can see, I'm probably here. Below me is Junction 37 of the M4, the main road into Porthcore, and over there is the M4. And this cut right through Heola's sheet. So if there were any Roman remains here, they're well and truly gone. And it is starting to rain. So let's get a move on. We're going to cross the footbridge to the other half of Hill of Sheets. And that's very different to that half. As we're going past, I thought I'd mention this. Uh, in the quarries, I did point out where RAF Stormy Down uh, was. It was an important base during World War II. Uh, it was for training purposes. And obviously with young, inexperienced pilots, they did have a few crashes in the area. And one of those occurred on the 21st of September, 1943. An Avro Anson carrying five people had a mid-air collision with a Westland Lysander carrying two. The Anson ended up crashing about 50 yards down here, just to the left. Unfortunately, the five crew on board all perished, as well as the two in the Westland. So I'll just point that out, how important RAF Stormy Down was as we're going past one of the crash sites. Anyway, let's get on to Heola Sheet. So I've now crossed over the M4 to Heola Sheet, the other side of Heola Sheet, which is very different to the t Tangler side of Heola Sheet. And I'll show you how it looks in a minute. I'm actually sheltering because it is raining. <laughs> so now we're going to go over down to uh, Kennelly Cross and then head back under the M4, back to South Canelli. So I'm going to get a move on. If I'm rushing, it's because it's raining. So this half of Higgler Street is very different to the other half. I actually have friends that live on this street. I'm actually sheltering under the M4 between South Canelli and North Canelli as the rain's quite heavy. I haven't got far to go. <laughs> oh my god. Let's go. Well, I'm back in South Canelli overlooking the South Canelli bypass. And all this traffic used to flow through the village itself. So, um, so it's much quieter than it used to be. I did mention at the start, there used to be a bottleneck called, I think it was called Smoky Cot Bridge. Somebody mentioned to me it was still there. So a few weeks ago, I climbed through the bushes. I must have looked a right weirdo from the road, looking for it. It's not there, but I did find some reflector posts and some of the old posts that used to hold the Chevron signs. Don't bother going in, get cut to pieces and there's nothing there and you look a weirdo. Anyway, <laughs> I'm getting very wet. Luckily, I filmed my goodbyes earlier and here they are. That was my little walk around South Canelli. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, before I forget, thanks to the people in South Canelli who showed me the photographs of the old railway line through the village. I didn't get your names, but thanks anyway. And it's, if you want to see more about the area, some videos below and coming up next. Also, YouTube have got a new feature. Over there is a super thanks. You can sort of buy me a coffee type thing below. Anyway, anyway, thanks for watching. And don't forget to watch some of our other videos, myself and maybe Mel. They're coming up next too.
So until next time, bye. Thank you.